morning. All right, uh, welcome to the Tuesday, October 15th, uh, Working Group Proponent Standard Meeting. Uh, I'm just gonna get started with a quick announcement. Uh, just a reminder for everyone who's uh, joined as a new contributor for mentorship, we have a doodle poll out at this link for uh, selecting a time to set up an office hours. So uh, please put your available times in there. Um, and then we'll jump into the agenda here. So the first item is uh, Ross, you had a, a line here about lenient path for component configs with object meta. Um, yeah, morning folks. Um, so like yesterday I reviewed uh, Obitex uh, PR about adding uh, strict serializer to kubelet. And as part of the work which I'm preparing for Cube ADM, I'm thinking about adding uh, customized support for uh, component configs. And right now, customized actually requires object meta, or at least the metadata dot name field to be present inside of uh, a piece of YAML. So it can be actually uh, customized. And- uh, After matching it up between the layers. Or well, yeah, m most of the people actually just add uh, metadata name and uh, this along with uh, the API version and kind is sufficient to basically get uh, customized to work with it. Yeah. And uh, enabling strict serializer is going to basically uh, error out on all such configs. So uh, I see, so people are just putting a bogus metadata.name in, even though it's not an officially like recognized field because it's yeah. customized to work. Yeah. Okay. It's actually a thing which bumped, we in KubeADM bumped uh, a long time ago. So we have a uh, strict serializer enabled in uh, warning only mode. And uh, as kind is actually able to uh, basically customize uh, kubeadm config. Uh, it basically slumps a uh, metadata name, which is uh, just a bogus metadata name. And um, we always warn, like kubeadm is going to always warn on uh, like a broken config or something like this. Mm -hmm. Can't remember the exact thing. But it's at least a warning. So uh, a lenient path should do, and uh, probably fixing this in the future is probably going to be the way to go forward. And uh, we should probably think about adding uh, object meta or at least some stripped version of it to component configs just to enable customized support. And also another way to tackle this is to basically go to the customized folks and uh, think of something like uh, singleton fields or something like this. I would actually be in favor of um, like having a selector func and uh, that you could at least supply at a library level, right? So that in, in something like kubeadm where we expect there to only be one kind, right? Like you can just match on kind for your customized patches. Yeah, I would probably prefer to just uh, basically attach a stripped version of object meta simply because uh, uh, as we all know, singletons are probably going to backfire at some point. So for example, if you think that uh, something is a singleton, it's probably not going to be true for uh, like What do you mean by a singleton in this context? Well, basically a um, GVK that's going to have a single instance oh. or cluster, you say. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, it would be weird to have multiple cluster configurations um, for a single Kubernetes run. But a tool that was wrapping Kubernetes, like Cluster API, I guess, might have multiple in the same place. Yes, that's exactly the case. So, yeah. and for component configs, it's even more obvious. So, for example, you can have several different sets of uh, ways of deploying a certain component, for example, on different nodes or 
different types of deployments and you may actually have uh, the same component config existing in several different config maps in the cluster with oh, several yeah. names. With regard to like, uh, like proxy and be based on that. Probably easier to just include object meta in it. Um, does is that the only thing that makes customized work? It doesn't have any other conventions that you can rely on around like how you structure the, the directory hierarchy or anything like that to get names. Like for yeah. example, right, customized works with config maps. Um, I believe it supports config maps as files, right? Which would not necessarily have a metadata struct associated with them because they're just files in the directory tree until they're processed into a config map. So I'm wondering if there's anything there. Yeah, I think I tried in the past to basically uh, patch up a YAML config, which is component config inside of a, a data field in the config map in a YAML file. And uh, I used, I think, uh, JSON patches and uh, it didn't work. So it's not parsing uh, the data fields inside a config map. You can only patch the, the config map uh, type. Got it. Um, all right, it's probably easiest just to add object meta to component configs. Uh, we should be clear about it not, the presence of object meta does not mean it's an API you can post directly to an API server. That's, I just want to make sure people don't get confused by that. Yeah, which is like uh, currently Cluster API uses a stripped down version of uh, object meta. So they have a local copy. And this is basically object meta's most user facing fields and the fields that are basically filled in by the API server and are otherwise read only to um, end users or probably should be opaque to end users are not uh, included in there. So we should probably talk to API machinery folks to try and invent a stripped down version of object meta. So we can basically put it on a, some central pace such as a component base repo and uh, leverage it for component configs and uh, other things such as CRD. So, yeah, I agree with that. Um, well, maybe not CRDs because CRDs would just have the traditional object meta, right? Yeah. Um, we for for our component config files, yeah, we can use our a stripped down version at least for now, unless at some point we decide that we want the full one. And as long as we stay schema compatible with the full one, it should be fine. Yeah. So that's one of my things. And the other thing is the uh, PSA about uh, CAP, which I prepared for a standard uh, command line interface. Ross before, Ross, before you go on, just a quick question. Um, yep. Because uh, the PRs for um, the Kube proxy and Kube scheduler have been merged already. So should we just basically create like a, a retrofit um, adding the linear path to those ones? Well, we do need yeah. to do that for the version, for, for yeah, turning the strict serializer on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, do it basically with others. Oh, I think I... Yeah. So Alex, if you can take that, that'd be great. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. So my next topic is uh, the standard CLI for uh, component config validation. Uh, so this is a cap, which is uh, like it proposes some like sub command based solution. Um, like I think it's only Stefan who actually reviewed it and probably Tim, but uh, I'll encourage you to just uh, go in read through the details. I'm not like uh, tied in at all with uh, this implement, like this proposal for an interface. So we can actually uh, discuss this. We have basically three main paths to go and this is just like showing up one of them. 
to come. But clearly, the, the need for allowing uh, components to just export some command line interface to verify their configs and do nothing more is basically uh, pretty much present and uh, cluster lifecycle tools is, are going to, and probably end users are going to uh, need this as soon as uh, component configs become more, more popular, which is going to happen when uh, more of them graduate to beta. Okay, I'll take a look at this. Absolutely, yeah, I, I'm gonna look at this like right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, that's the end of the written agenda. Um, Alex, I think you might have had some other questions you wanted to bring up today. Um, basically, there's just uh, that one. Well, I mean, we had to talk about, you know, what's the like standard way forward for those fixed serializers. And we kind of agreed on, okay, let's do a linear path and one first and then uh, next version, basically when it's deprecated, we drop that um, regardless of API version. And then there's also the one for kubelet, um, which I knew about. Um, so I wasn't sure um, what happens with the remote config. So I think it's using, like when we take a remote config in kubelet and um, we're basically running it for the same uh, code factory, right? So we will have to add the linear path there as well. Yeah, I, and I think what happens with that is it's decoded in memory to validate it before committing it um, after it down. Although I, I want you to double check that that other function you found is still being used. Okay. Because it, you it might be just downloading it to disk first and then loading it through the other path. Okay, I'll I'll check it now. Thanks. Um, okay, any, anyone else have any items for today? All right, great, everyone have a good day. Uh, we, again, we are working on uh, the office hours, getting that set up, so please put your times in the doodle. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.